Hello and welcome again. I have a 2006 4L80E. We're going to go ahead and tear it down and uh, do a tear down inspection and see what we are going to be able to find here. Now, like I mentioned before, always take everything from the outside first off. Remove the extension housing now. Use the 15 millimeter socket to remove all the extension housing bolts. One thing to notice is that uh, I believe this was 03 and up. The extension housing bushing changed from a uh, uh, brass type steel back bushing to a uh, babbit bushing and the outside diameter also changed so the bushings are not interchangeable between these models and before it wasn't available and you had to get the whole extension housing from the dealership but now uh, this bushing is available separately Okay, here we have our turbine speed sensor or input speed sensor and here we have our output speed sensor. This is our uh, digital transmission range sensor. Uh, on older vehicles it was a manual lever position sensor and then you had the analog uh, or voltage drop type uh, uh, manual lever position sensor and this is a digital transmission range sensor. Take that off. Take the linkage off. Now here you might want to use your buffer before you take that off. out of the toolbox here. The reason why you want to use the buffer here to take the, the before you take the man, uh, manual lever position off, or sensor off, or the DTR sensor off, is when, when you tighten up the linkage lever, it kind of uh, opens up the sides uh, of the linkage rod, or it kind of uh, blossoms like that, and you don't want to damage your sensor. Come clean off like this, slide off. If you try to take it off and it gets stuck, then it means that the, the shaft it, it became a block. Okay, now we're going to remove our input and our output speed sensors. I'm going to remove the pump bolt, but before that I'm going to take the input shaft, torque converter, uh, o-ring off of the input shaft. This way, when, whenever you're uh, taking the pump out, the pump stain is not going to get stuck on the uh, input shaft by this o-ring. You probably don't need to know this, but the first digit is the year model, and the first digit on this one is the number 6, which is 2006, uh, and the, the transmission code is a 6MJP. We're not going to worry about that right now.
right now. We're just going to go ahead and just continue disassembling this unit. Now we're going to remove the transmission pan and see what it looks like. Transmission pan looks in very, very good condition. What I'm assuming is that they serviced this transmission thinking that he might fix it, and, that, and I think that's what they did. The filter looks fairly clean, and it looks new. On the used filters, the shiny metal is going to be like a little bit black. That's normal. You know, transmission fluid is made out of carbon molecules, and that carbon, you know, uh, film is going to be on the filter and you will slide your finger like this and we'll take it off a little bit. I mean it's very, it has very little so this is, that's an indication that this is a brand new filter. Go ahead and start setting things to the side. Now here we have the uh, force motor or the pressure control solar, uh, solenoid or EPC for short. Here we have our uh, torque converter uh, clutch solenoid. It's a both width modulated solenoid. And here we, ha we have our A and B shift solenoids. And this right here is the pressure switch manifold assembly. We're going to go ahead and uh, start removing our valve body. Just be careful with the tabs. Sometimes with age, they become brittle and they break. And if the braking tabs break off, you can manage to attach it and keep it securely in place. But if it's not possible, then you're going to end up buying a new internal wire and harness. I'm going to go ahead and remove all the bolts for the valve body. This little pipe right here is for the rear lubrication or rear lube. Whenever you go back with it, make sure that this uh, little pipe here is not restricted or plugged in any sense or form. pressure switch manifold bolts for the valve body I use a 10 millimeter socket for the pressure switch manifold I'm using an 8 millimeter socket okay to remove the pressure switch manifold from the valve body don't yank on it because you have some O-rings on the pressure switches. What you want to do is you just want to twist it a little bit and then it'll come off. The reason for that is these O-rings they get they stick in the valve body. And when you yank on it or you pull away from it, you're gonna pull the, the, the O-rings and sometimes the protector that protects the the switch from any uh, debris or contamination coming into it. You want to avoid that. Now our valve body is ready for removal. This is our valve body. We have a third and fourth accumulator uh, pistons in this valve body. We're not going to disassemble this at this time. We're just doing a tear down inspection. You have eight check balls in the case. One, two, three, four, five, 
6, 7, and 8. This is our intermediate uh, servo piston assembly with return spring. Now we're going to remove the uh, low reverse servo and second accumulator piston uh, cover and then we'll take the reverse servo and second accumulator piston housing. Uh, remove it from the transmission. This is the cover, and the cover has a metal gasket on it. That metal gasket is not reusable. Here we go. This is a two-part, or whatever, two-part servo. This is the low reverse uh, servo piston assembly. And the low reverse piston assembly house is the second accumulator piston. And this is the second accumulator piston return spring. Now we're going to remove a uh, T40. It's a feed bolt. It has a hole in the center. It feeds fluid for the overdrive uh, piston housing to apply the overdrive uh, clutches. Torx 40, and if you can see here, it's uh, see-through. I mean, it has a feet hole drilled through it. On our center support, we have a, we're going to use a 3/8 12-point socket. And it's the same, it's a feed bolt, it has a hole going through it. Now we are ready to disassemble everything out of the barrel of the case. Using a 13 millimeter socket. Okay, so here we have our pump gears, and these pump gears are not worn out at all. They're nice and uh, shiny and clean. I'm going to get a little closer, and you can see they're just shiny. They don't have uh, grooves in it. It's not scored or marked in any way. So this pump is going to be in good condition. What is very common in these units is the boost valve gets worn out and you will have high line pressure and what, what that does, what it happens is that uh, the boost valve gets stuck and it pushes the pressure regulator valve in its close position. You have extremely high line pressure and what it does, it breaks parts inside the transmission. You're gonna have, if you have that issue, you have, uh, you're probably going to have like the third gear drum is going to be popped out, you know, where the, where the snap ring goes. So we'll go ahead and tear this thing down and see what went wrong with it. Okay. So now we'll go ahead and remove the overdrive clutches. Snap ring out of here.
piston housing. This is where the bolt attaches to the T40, the Torx 40. And this applies the clutches that we just removed, the overdrive clutches, the overdrive frictions. I'm going to set this post plus drum here in overdrive planetary gear assembly to the side. This is our forward clutch drum assembly. You always want to make sure that, you, that this drum is not ring cut. The bushing don't look too good. It's kind of black on one side. I don't know if you can see it there, but... This transmission is here for LADEs. They have a, a problem with the bushings. The bushings they like to wear very frequently. So every time you do one of these, just make sure that you replace all the bushings. So this is our forward clutch drum. And the frictions, they're green like this. They're high energy frictions. They're in very good shape. Just making sure that I don't see any Ring cuts in this drum. This drum looks very good. Set that to the side. This is the forward clutch hub. Got a plastic washer here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove the uh, third and reverse drum. The clearance is all right. It's not out. It doesn't look too wobbly, too loose. I'm not seeing any damage here yet. Direct friction is in very good shape. Yep. I'm going to get here closer. So this is what uh, friction looks like. Forward and direct, they're both the same. These are not red like the other ones. These are high energy frictions and they're supposed to look green. Okay, so uh, this is our intermediate one-way clutch or sprag assembly. It three wheels clockwise and it locks counterclockwise. Three wheels clockwise, locks counterclockwise. This is a little bit fun to remove. We've got a spiral snap ring. Those snappers are supposed to keep everything in place. So here we go. It has a little lock on it, so you have to unlock it. See how it spirals. Go ahead and take this cover off. And this is what a sprag look like. These are the elements or the sprag elements. This is what a sprag look like. And you always want to check for wear on the race, which is the inner race, which is the drum, and the outer race, which is this right here, which is this pitted, this cord. So this bag is, is damaged, it's no good. So we're going to need this uh, outer race, the inner race, which is the drum. Drum looks in very good shape. So we'll go ahead and set this to the side so we already found one problem. What this means is that there was a possibility that it would slip or skip second gear. The reason for that is uh, the sprag is not holding. This intermediate clutches or second gear clutches are not going to hold. So this is our intermediate band. It looks in very good shape. This is where the intermediate servo uh, piston pin uh, applies the band or it breaks that drum. That's what it is, it's a brake band. Okay. Go ahead and uh, remove our 
intermediate clutches. So I can get some little bit of light in there. Okay, I hope that looks a little better. Intermediate high energy frictions for the greens. They also look in good shape. Good. Go ahead and take the center support. Snap ring. This snap ring is tapered. on one end, on one side, and it's tapered on the opposite end. Now we have our cooler line uh, fitting removed. On these models, the cooler line fitting goes inside the center support. So you have to remove that in order to remove your center support assembly. We already have that removed. Our snap ring removed and our bolt removed. For the whole gear train to come out. Okay, this is the uh, center support. The center support washer. We have a front plan of the center gear. This is the complete gear train. We have the low reverse band. Okay, this unit looks in very good shape. I'm questioning, besides the wear on the bushing, it is not all too worn out. I'm going to have a second talk with the customer and see what, what the issue was here. It might be an electrical issue. And this is from another shop. And, uh, We're going to get their diagnostic report and uh, see what, what went on here. But here we have our sun gear. Uh, sun gear. It's a, a dual sun gear. Here we have a little lubrication hole that has to align with this hole here. And this is our center support. And our center support applies our intermediate clutches, second clutches. And uh, with this rinse here, the direct drum sits in here. And you have third and reverse, or direct and reverse. The drum applies to direct and reverse for two gears. Okay. And now let's go ahead and disassemble our rear planetary gear assembly. You gotta be careful with the snap rings. It looks kind of easy coming out, but they are a little bit stiff. Make sure you can wear some eye protection so you don't have this uh, snap rings flying into your eyes. And you always want to make sure that you check the little bearings, make sure that the races are not pitted. So this is our rear planetary gear assembly. This is the reluctor ring for the alpha speed sensor and this is the parking gear for the parking mechanism. You always want to check this uh, pinions for side wear. You kind of uh, put a little bit of pressure with your fingers uh, just to get a feel for it. Make sure that it's not, it doesn't feel a little bit fitted. Everything here looks in good shape. Now uh, let's go ahead and uh, disassemble the uh, post clutch drum. Get my pliers here ready. Okay, so this is basically just a disassembly of a 4L80E 2006 model. Trying to find out what went wrong with it. So far, everything seems to be all right. I don't see no strip splines anywhere. All I see is just bushing wear. Pumps in good condition. 
shaft's not worn out. All of my frictions, the band, everything looks good. Post clutches, they look in perfect condition. So there you have it. This is a complete teardown of a 4L80P 2006 model. So far, the only evidence I've got is just bushing wear, which is very typical for this unit. And the bushings are not extremely worn, but they are extremely worn. Uh, the gear train kind of hangs, and the fluid bypasses the seating rings, and you will have like loss of bolder drive. You will be driving on the highway, and then you lose fourth gear or you would have some other symptoms and you would have some burnt frictions as well which in this case the, the, the bushings were not as severely worn as I've seen them and uh, that's why you don't see a lot of damage here on this unit but these units do have that typical problem of bushing wear so for now he's going to need a whole new set of bushings and I'm going to talk to the customer and see what he wants to do now next for this unit all right, so there you have it, 4 lade completely uh, disassembled, completely, completely tore down. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll keep uploading uh, uh, more transmission videos for you guys. All right, like it, subscribe on my channel, and share this video, do whatever you want with it. This is Hiram, I'm signing off. Thanks.